one stage or another, you may or may not want to revalue your property. And the purpose would be so that you can reach in to the property's growth or equity and take it out and then use it to perpetuate as a deposit or whatever it may look like for another property. And the most important component of this part of the process is the valuer. Now the valuer needs to be your friend. So there's three points I wanna talk about today on how to get the best valuation for your property. The very first point is preparation. Now we've all heard of the saying, preparation prevents poor performance. But the preparation in this scenario means the difference between potentially tens of thousands of dollars or hundreds of thousands of dollars. So a result or a non-result for you. Now, what are the things that we would need to prepare when we're getting our property valued? Well, the obvious ones are we need to make sure the lawns are done, the kitchens are tidy, the property is in a very, or in as good a condition uh, as it can be. And then we often say that you don't get a second chance to make a first opinion. So actually having the property presented as well as it can be from the curb to the kitchen will potentially pay dividends for you. Now that also means that all the dishes are out of the kitchen sink. It means the clothes are off the floor, the lawns are done, the window blinds are up to allow that light and that fresh air into the property. Because whether we like it or not, valuers aren't these mechanical beings that are just purely valuing your property on just data and data alone. There's a few other key components in there. There's risk, there's condition, there's data, there's value. And whether they like it or not, there's some sort of subconscious, perhaps overwhelming decision to be made for them on whether they think your property is at this value or at this value. So preparation is crucial. The second key point is communication. Now this is a really important piece of the jigsaw puzzle, if you will, because there are three main parties involved here. There's yourself as the owner, there's the property manager, and there's the tenant. And every single party needs to be in on the game. So let's explore that a little bit further. The valuer is first gonna make an appointment to inspect the property. And what's really important here is that your property manager clearly knows that they meet them on site. Or even if we come back a step, if the appointment was on the 1st of July, I'd be giving my tenants plenty of notice two weeks prior to that date so that my house can be tidy or my property can be tidy. Everything is gonna be prepared. Because remember, you don't get the second chance to make a first opinion. So for, now we've got our property manager covered. They're in the loop of communication. They know the when, they know the how, and they know what they need to do to give you and your property the best chance of a better result. Third point is the report. Now, the report for me is where the gold is, and not many people talk about this. Unbeknownst to a lot of people is that we and sophisticated investors have exactly the same tools as what a valuer has. And that might be data collection agencies such as uh, RP Core Logic, On The House, realestate.com uh, and the like. So all this data is freely or easily available. It's not free, but it's easily available. Uh, it's about how you decipher it is where the gold is. Because remember, a valuer is in and out of your house probably in about 15 to 20 minutes max. They may have 10 to 12 valuations on in a day. So you need to create this report that's gonna help support your potential valuation result so that when they get back to the office at the end of the day and they're going through thousands of pages of data or whatever it may be, that potentially you've created and given them everything they need to shortcut their job. So what's in this report? I've mentioned data, and so what we're looking for here is comparable values. So there's no use comparing your property, which may be a uh, three bedroom, two bathroom, single brick garage house, to the sale results of a four bedroom, double lock up garage, two bathrooms on a thousand square meters. Because whilst if it was just numbers, it'd look really, really good, but the valuer is no fool and subconsciously they might actually punish you for trying to overstate the value of your property. So one, be real, be very, very clear, be accurate on the value of your house. So data, that's the point, first point. The second point is to get three local real estate agents in, and clearly the property management company is gonna be one of those people, and ask for a market appraisal on their letterhead. And a market appraisal essentially is when the real estate agent comes out, the sales agent comes out and uh, creates 
a report, and there might even be some data in that which you could use, to give you the value of your property should you want to list it for sale and sell the property. And where the gold is, is with this is that it's on three local agents' letterheads, which is hopefully supporting the valuation that you're after. So let's just assume that it was between five to 550,000. So now you've got three letters, you've got the data with accurate comparables, uh, and it's in a pack that you're gonna give to the valuer during the valuation, which brings me back to communication and the point that I made saying that your property manager needs to be at the property the same time the valuation is being carried out so that they can give the valuer the pack that you've created. A couple more points on the pack just before we wrap up. So we've got the data, we've got the market uh, appraisals from the agents, but what happens if perhaps you've only owned the property for a short period of time and you've bought it in pretty cosmetically challenged condition? but you've carried out a very big renovation. The key here is to take before photos and after photos of the renovation for such a short period of time because there needs to be an explanation to the valuer that why in such a short period of time are you asking for a much higher valuation? And secondly, what work did you do to support the valuation that you're actually asking you to? So you can see what I'm doing here is I'm actually building a case for the valuer to agree with me as opposed to perhaps find reasons A, not to agree with me, or B, come up with their own comparables. Now, there's no science to this. Uh, valuers are well-trained and very well-educated people, but they're at a bit of a, um, they're in a negative situation because their, their area might be across four, five, six different council areas. So they're actually not a master in that particular area in terms of finding out the true value of property. So once again, communication, preparation, and the report is where the gold is. And hopefully, when you combine all three of them and you do it correctly, it'll give you a great chance at obtaining the valuation that you're looking for. Thanks so much for watching. For more great insights, head over to our website, rightpropertygroup.com.au. You can also tune into our podcast, Investing Insights, or follow us on all socials. We look forward to seeing you again soon.